With violence and drugs endemic in Britain's jails, the authorities have drafted in 2,500 rookie officers across the country. In HMP Bullingdon, Oxfordshire, an alarming 75% of officers are in their first two years of service. Everybody's ignoring me. Down, There's only about 15 officers. All right, up here. all right. Now they shout at me. This is my first day live, mate, so give me some slack. Okay. Today, former office worker John Aldridge is starting his first shift. He will have to control 65 inmates and one of the three spurs on Sea Wing. What are you doing up here, buddy? What are you doing up here? This sprawling prison is home to over 1,100 prisoners, ranging from shoplifters to murderers. Oh, on the one turn, let's go, let's move on to spur three, please. 26 year old John has just completed a 10 week college training course. I decided to become a prison officer. Um, I was trawling through job adverts and I clicked on it and had a read of the job description and I thought, actually, that sounds really quite interesting. Violence against staff in Britain's prisons has risen dramatically as gangs of prisoners battle for control of the wings. It's up by nearly a third in the past 12 months. Bullingdon saw over 130 assaults on officers last year alone. A little bit nerve-wracking. Um, college seems quite a long way to move from here. Looking forward to actually, I guess, taking the training wheels off. <laughs> Basically like passing your test and taking the L plates off and putting little green peas on. It's 7.45 in the morning. Unlock at Bullingdon. John's first task is to check on the prisoners. Step back a bit, mate, for us, mate. Oh, I just want to come in and have a chat. I don't want to chat. I don't want to talk through a door, that's all. I don't want to talk. Nothing to talk about. Right. I'm not coming out for 10 minutes and you bang me back up. I'm not going to let you out now to go back behind your door. Because you're so new, you don't really know what you're doing yet. You giving me a bit of jip isn't going to help me learn, though, is it? Do you want to fucking fall out of me? No, I don't. Why are you standing there causing me shit? I'm not trying to cause you shit. I just want... All you're doing is aggravating the situation. All right. Because I'm not going to try All right, I'll go away. They don't like it. That's it. Leave behind their doors. I thought I was going to be all right today. Yeah. I don't feel all right now. In need of serious advice on managing the prisoners, John seeks help from one of the most respected men on the wing, 35-year-old prisoner, top dog, Anthony Gooch. Mills was really quite upset with me this morning. Yeah, the thing is, though, you can say something to someone, they can take it the wrong way, there's no fault of your own, do you know what I mean? Yeah. The thing is, you find in that boundary in between... Yeah. ..of doing the job... And giving a bit of leeway to certain people. He's come onto the wing and he's a typical new officer. He's uh, doing everything by the book as he was trained. Um, and if you do that, it sort of goes against the grain with certain inmates. You have the attitude of coming in and going by the book, you sort of gain a lot of enemies very, very quickly. And as we've seen in the past, inmates have uh, ways to deal with officers like this. Normally ends up with uh, a big bucket of uh, urine or excrement thrown over their head or, or they're assaulted. Um, so it is key that they come in and they, they get to know the people and they learn how the wing is run. He's made threats to go up the bars, made threats to harm staff, made threats to disrupt the regime. <laughs> One officer who knows better than most how to gain the respect of the prisoners is supervising officer Mark Walker. I'm the type of guy that will have a laugh and a joke with them. I'll take the mickey out of them but they know that when I am serious and I need things to be done, the majority of the time, it gets done. It's a lesson that John needs to learn, and fast. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Or what, dickhead? What are you going to do? Do not call me a dickhead. Or what? Or what? Or what? Or what? You're a dickhead. I am not. You're a dickhead. No. You're a dickhead, no, bro. Not. You're a dickhead. You're a dickhead. Do not call me a Fuck up, you dickhead. <laughs> I have just been called a dickhead. That's what's just happened there. Multiple times. You right? Try and distance yourself. When it's like Yeah, that, I did my... Just try... I know you're doing the My kitchen. brain... I was like... I was... Yeah. If I'm being honest, I was starting to get a little bit scared there, because yeah. he's bigger than me. This is why this is our safe area. Just put distance between yourself. 
It's not backing off, it's not walking away. No. It's for your safety. He was just frustrated and not getting the right answer. You've just started, it's still a learning process. Oh, oh, people Some people get frustrated like that. They do. All right? I've been spoken to in a threatening manner before, but no, nothing quite that threatening. And he's a big bloke. He ain't constant enough to work in a prison. He don't know what he's doing. He just lit. I, he's, he's, a, he's a bit of a feminine officer. I'm not being not racist or wherever you call that, but I think he's a bit, he's a bit soft to work in a prison. If these people are coming out of college and then they're coming into here and they're locking up people that have done eight years in prison that have knocked screws out every week. His mentality, he shouldn't be an officer. Oh, I don't think so, personally. If you took Mr. Aldridge after doing six months here and stuck him in Wandsworth, oh my God. He'd quit. He'd quit the same day. I swear to God, he'd, he'd walk straight out and go, no, not for me. Yeah, this is a Jewish officer. This King. is your perfect definition. He's quite toned. <laughs> he's fair. He's got a pretty mouth. And he's, he's good. This is what we want. <laughs> At Bollingdon, 95 new officers have been recruited in the past year to help ease the strain. Got all the landing planes in one go. Happy days. New officer John Aldridge needs to be on his toes. He's already been seriously intimidated and is desperate to gain some credibility with the prisoners. Governor, governor, governor. Governor, governor, governor. Mr. Aldridge, hack it, please. Governor. Mr. Aldridge, please hack it. Oh, Frank! Frank! The informal rules of prison mean officers rely on influential prisoners to help keep order. On Sea Wing, it's down to Anthony Gooch. He's on remand for six months for an armed robbery he says he didn't commit. On Sea Wing, he's trusted by officers. I'm an insider and a violent reduction rep. So where uh, a prisoner might find it a bit difficult to go and talk to an officer about certain problems he's got on the wing, whether he owes money for drugs or there's a bit of a beef from outside that's come into the prison, he can come to us um, so he doesn't think he's a bit of a grass for going to the officers and then we can try and intervene and try and sort it out or uh, sort a solution out without it becoming violent. Supervising officer Mark Walker is particularly concerned by one new prisoner. You're here as a violence reduction rep. Yeah. Got any issues with one of the lads that's recently come on? Yeah. Uh, he's quite vulnerable. He's just received a life sentence. He's stating to us that he's under threat on the unit. Yeah. But you've been on the spell all the time. I need to know whether um, he's going to be okay because if he is under threat, I need to move him off the unit. Yeah, this is the one that came in for the uh, murder. Yes. Yes, I'm aware. Yeah, yeah, I can sort that out. No problem. Just three days into the job, Officer John Aldridge has been given the duty of checking on the high-risk prisoner Walker's worried about. He makes a shocking discovery and immediately calls Gooch and fellow officers for assistance. Just wait, because really going for yourself. Open the door, something's going. I said, go on. They ain't coming in, don't worry. They're not coming in, they're not coming in, they're not coming in. The inmate is covered in blood in what appears to be an act of self-harm. The HL is code red. A code red is called when blood has been spilt. Is he trying to do? Cut himself up. Oh, I know, I know. I know. I saw him like three minutes ago. Yeah, I'll get you another towel. You, what's your name? What's up, mate? Now, sit down. Get off. While Aldridge clears the wing, Gooch steps in to take charge of the situation. What's going on? I'm sure it's coming. They're all Who? 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 At half past yeah, two, and he's on two hours. He obviously pressed his cell bell, so oh, I come right. up and he was banging on the door. I thought I couldn't see what through the obstacles. I thought he smashed his head open. It was yeah. all pouring down. We've got a vulnerable inmate uh, that's been given a life sentence, um, suffering from very severe paranoia. Um, but the paranoia's got so much that he's decided to take a razor and cut his throat all the way around. Um, where the officers were at the door and they wanted to go in, he's then paranoid the officers are going to hurt him. Uh, 
So I went in on my own and he handed over the knife and we've managed to treat him and he's gone off. But um, someone like that needs to be down healthcare to get their, um, their head in the right place. I've I done the check. Yeah, no, 25 no. minutes no, before. That's fine. It's not you that done it, was it? You're doing your job, mate. You're all right. Yeah. That new officer's probably never seen anyone cut themselves up before. It takes a bit of getting used to. So find him. Yeah. yeah. You okay? Uh, not sure, really, to be honest with you. Yeah, we should have a chat after. Um, I can't even wait for you. That's all right. Yeah. Um, um, you've got the care team available if you need anyone. Yeah. Uh, we'll go out the back and have a chat in a minute, yeah?